Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. And today I'm in Lightroom Classic, I'm editing a landscape. And if you've been here before, you know I'm a really big fan of big, bold, colorful landscapes and cityscapes for that matter. I just like color is really what it comes down, uh, comes down to, but sometimes you have images where color just doesn't really work. And in those cases, I like to craft a monochrome. And the beautiful, fun, awesome thing about monochromes is you can make them pretty dramatic without really having to worry about the intense, what I call sugar rush of color overwhelming your viewers. So you can create dramatic, dark, moody monochromes pretty easily in Lightroom with a few key tips, which is what I'll be doing in this video. And like I said, they look great in monochrome when you do that. So I'm gonna dive into this photo. Now, before I get going too far, if you're interested, I've got a 17 page editing guide. It's a PDF, it's free for anyone that subscribes to my newsletter. That's available down at the link below. It gives you some insights into tips, tricks, and ideas, and insights, things like that about how to get the most out of editing in Lightroom Classic. Uh, check that out at the link below if you're interested. And this is the uh, the landscape that we're going to be talking about. So, of course, I'm going to start in basic because that's basic and that's really where you should start. And I always start by clicking the black and white. Now, if you go back to the original, um, one thing to be aware of is that as far as the colors in this image, because this comes into play, and this is one of the tricks, this comes into play quite a bit. The colors that I see primarily are green and blue, but there's also some yellow. So just keep that in mind, green, blue, and yellow. So I've converted to monochrome, and I, I'm good there, but I do want to make this kind of a contrasty, kind of intense monochrome. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I start by uh, bumping up the uh, contrast. But in this case, what I often find myself doing with a lot of landscapes is pulling the highlights down and the shadows up. But in this case, I'm actually bringing the highlights up because what I want to do is accentuate the bright parts of the photo because I am making something fairly dramatic, which means I'm also going to create some deep, dark uh, areas of the photo as well. And I'll pull the shadows down. So that's a little bit opposite of what I normally do in a landscape. I'm actually going to pull the whites up as well. And I go pretty high here, like in the mid 30s. So let's call that a Let's pull it back, maybe 37, and I lift the blacks just a tiny bit, something about like that. Maybe I'll give the photo a little bit of clarity, just because I like clarity so much. Pretty simple and straightforward stuff, but if you look at before and after, before and after, it's looking good. And if you look at the before and after of this edit, before and after, you can see we're already amping up the drama quite a bit, which is helping us get where I want to be. Now, one of the first things I like to do after doing that is jumping into B&W down here, black and white, which is also color mixer when it's a color photo. And the reason why is this black and white mix is so powerful. It gives you the ability to control the luminance values of the different color channels. Remember, I was talking about blue, green, and yellow. Well, I want to play with those here because that's going to help me increase the contrast or the difference between the bright and the dark areas and make this photo a bit more dramatic. So the yellow is really this thin strip uh, across the center of the shoreline, mostly over here. And so what I want to do is accentuate that a little bit. I'm going to make that a little bit brighter. So I'm going to go to like a 30 or so there, and that's going to give me a nice little pop of brightness there. So if you look at the before and after, that's nice. But to sort of counter that, I'm going to take the greens down and make them a little bit darker because the greens kind of surround that area. So before and after, I think that's looking pretty good. And then the other major color is blue, which is really the sky and the water. And I actually wanna take that down as well. Now, if you wanted to go super dramatic, you can do things like that. And you see photos like that. I usually see that on cityscapes, right? Like long exposure, kind of fine art cityscapes where they make the sky black. I don't wanna go that dark, but I do wanna go a little bit darker than it was. So negative uh, 20, I think that looks good. And so. One of the reasons I like this tool so much is what I've just done. Controlling the luminance values of those different color channels gives me a little bit more drama, a bit more contrast. That's really all I'm doing, creating some darkening and lightening to play those off against each other. So if you look at the before and the after, most noticeable in the sky, of course, and the water, but before and after, it's really helping us get there. And then after I've done that, what I like to do is jump into masking. So I've kind of got my base black and white before and after, and I'm gonna jump into masking, which is right here, of course, and I'm gonna start with a radial gradient. Now this radial gradient is gonna be focused mostly on that center section. 
So I'm not making it too big or too broad. It's just kind of going in that area. And what I want to do is just to add a little bit of clarity. So I'm going to bump that up mid 20. So 25, let's call it. And if you look at the before and after on that, before and after, it gives a little bit of crispiness, but it also brightens it just a tiny bit. But the other thing I want to do is play with dehaze. Now, a lot of people will add dehaze, and you can see what it's doing there. It's creating a little bit more darkness. I'm going to actually remove dehaze. So I'm going to go negative dehaze, so rehaze, I guess, um, but negative 33, 34. And what that's done is kind of brighten that area. So if you look at the before and the after, it's just putting a little bit more focus on the center of the photo. And I like that use of dehaze for that. Uh, but there's one more mask I want to do. And this is the one, another trick that I like. And this is also going to be a radial gradient. But what I want to do is focus that kind of mostly on the sky. So uh, and around these peaks. So maybe something about like that and maybe a little bit higher. And what I want to do here is if you look at the uh, mountains, uh, let, me, let me hide that mask. If you look at the mountains, where the mountains are essentially touching the sky, there's not a lot of contrast there. There's not a lot of difference between the sky brightness level and the edge of the mountains, which makes it a little bit harder to see that edge. I want to uh, focus that, no pun intended, I guess, but I want to make that a little bit more noticeable. And so what I need to do is essentially darken the sky. Now, we did that earlier when we were down here in this black and white uh, the old color mixer, if you will, by dropping the blue luminance. But I just want to get it along those edges. So this is where you get into this tricky uh, mask intersections, which are incredibly good, actually. I just love to do this. And so I've got my original uh, mask right there. And maybe I'm going to pull that back just a little bit, maybe lift that a tiny bit more. And what I want to do is now subtract and I'm going to subtract some landscape masks. So the cool thing is you have these AI masks. It just goes and figures everything out for you. So it figures out the sky, which I'm going to leave alone, but it finds the mountains. Yeah, I'm going to pull that. I'm going to get the vegetation, the water, and the natural ground and click Create Mask. Now what it does is it'll create a mask for all those things. And then because it's in subtract mode, it subtracts it from my radial gradient. So now my radial gradient, as you can see, it's no longer just a radial, uh, but it fades nicely because that's a nice feathering, but also it just goes right along that edge perfectly. And I do see it missed a little bit there. You can just come back and click subtract again, add another brush, uh, and just swipe along here just to remove that. It looks like there's a tiny bit of fringe on those trees and maybe a little bit of mass that needs to be removed along that, uh, maybe a little bit there. So now what I've done, radial gradient, subtract some landscape mass, and also subtract a little bit with the brush. And I've got an incredibly accurate selection that allows me to target that area. And all I want to do is slightly darken it because I want to create a little bit more contrast so you can see those mountains better. So now if you look at this mask before and after, before, quite a bit brighter in the brightness, plus the clouds are kind of white and all that. And because it's a monochrome, there's a lot of white. Obviously, it's white and black, basically. Uh, but with the gray and all that, it just doesn't stand out as much. And I feel like now it stands out a little bit better. So before and after. And it doesn't have to be significant, but the ability to control those masks and do those kind of uh, very accurate selections by intersecting those masks really just allows you to get a ton of control over the, uh, the edges there. So before and after. And that also makes it match a little bit more with the sky up there. So I think that's working for me, and that's really it for my mask. I'm done with that. Now I've got a couple more things. Now one trick I like to do, and there's another little trick for you for making these kind of beautiful dramatic monochromes. I like to go into color grading, and as much as I like monochromes, I have to admit that I don't like them a lot. Um, what I do like about, uh, let me rephrase that, um, I like monochromes quite a bit. I don't like the black and white. It's just black, white, and shades of gray. So what I like to do is come in and add a tiny bit of blue into those. And what I end up creating is kind of this silvery, what I call moonlight look. So I'm going to go into the shadows and I'm going to take the uh, shadows and add a slight bit of blue. So just something like that, not a massive amount, but all it does is create a slight silver look. And then I'm also going to take the luminance down on that. So I'm going to make that a little bit darker. So maybe like a negative 40, 41. So if you look at the before, 
very much a standard kind of traditional black and white and now a tiny bit of silver in there. And then I often will do the same thing in the highlights. So I'm gonna come do a little bit of that into the highlights, but the difference here is I'm gonna take the luminance and go up. So I'm gonna increase that a little bit. So 60, 70, something like that. And I think I'm gonna go back to the shadows and just make sure I'm not doing too much saturation. So maybe pull that back a little bit. I just wanna give it the slightest silver kind of moonlight look. I don't know what else to call it, but I like to think of it as moonlight, that silvery look. So if you look at the before, traditional monochrome gray, et cetera, and now slight bit of silver, which I just really like. I just think it looks so good. And last thing I'm gonna do is just put a little vignette on this guy and call that, a, uh, call that an edit. And so that is how I'm able to quickly go from a kind of, you know, it's a beautiful scene. This is outside of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. But despite a beautiful scene, the blue, the green, a little bit of the yellow, I don't know, it just wasn't working for me. I've edited this in color before. It looks fine, but I just think as a monochrome, it just really jumps off the screen and really pops. And a lot of that is due to controlling the light and the light values and adding that little bit of tint, which I just think helps so well. So those are some tips that I consider really easy, simple, but powerful, so you can create these stunning monochromes in Lightroom. Super easy, super powerful, before, after. That's how I did this one. Hope it gives you some ideas. Hope it helps. Leave some comments down below if you have any, and I'll be back soon with more videos. Don't forget to check out my free editing guide for Lightroom, and uh, I'll see you soon, my friends. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.